In this video I'll cover how to texture a character. In the last video we covered how to bake our maps and create our ambient occlusion and uh, normal maps. So now we're going to learn how to or review how to color our character. So where we last left off with in the previous video we have our final uh, mesh right here. Uh, we have the high poly and low poly right here. So I'm going to turn both of those off. Uh, usually what I like to do is let's say put that back on low poly. Turn them off. Uh, and then take both of these and right click and remove selected objects so he's not part of low poly anymore so I can move him back to here and I want to add a little more detail to him so I'm going to create a plane and reduce the plane down to uh, one poly and I'm going to start making some leaves on here so I'm going to scale this down so it's pretty small and if you don't have leaves or anything like that then you're, you can skip this part but if you want to add some different leaves for texturing or to transparency maps and such I'm going to put a leaf right here. Let's call this um, a leaf. Actually, I shouldn't, it doesn't matter if I name it because I'm going to be combining it anyway. So let's rotate it down a little bit and maybe a little bit an angle. And cool, call it good to go. Uh, control D for duplicate, put another leaf down here. Move that over there. Control D, put a leaf over here. Rotate, move it over there. And let's go up a little bit higher, control D for duplicate, pull this up over, maybe rotate it a little, duplicate another one, and I'll do one more, put that over there, maybe make this one a little bigger, and duplicate, put this one at the top. And I can make that a little smaller, pull this forward, and let's rotate it that way. Okay, so that'll give me some leaves. So now I have a couple leaves sitting on this vine, so it looks a little more realistic and interesting. Uh, and everything should be good to go. Alright, cool. So these guys uh, now need to be uh, put into the UV map, so I'm going to pull up the UV editor. Select everything, so I know where everything is. Then right click, go to UV shell, and select the leaves. So I've grabbed all the leaves because they were all the same UVs, really big. So I'm going to scale all of these really small. Say leaf size about that big and put that right there. Uh, cool, everything should be good. So when I put one leaf right here, they'll all get populated with leaves. Let's go back to object mode, and I can combine all these now. So select all of that and go mesh combine and wipe out the history and rename this just to pillar uh, obviously it doesn't want to be called just pillar so I'll leave it as is all right cool so everything's good to go uh, so now we just need to create our UV template because I need this little image right here and this little image right here so I can color those so I'm going to create a snapshot and I'm going to toss this into uh, same 2048 and put this on here so this is our pillar UV template and pressing OK doesn't actually save it you have to press apply to save it so edge color black should be fine okay let's apply and close switch back out to here and I should now have pillar UV template yep I have that so I know where the leaf is and I know where the vine is so let's jump over to Photoshop and let's import our images. So I want the template and I want the AO and I'll bring the normal in anyway. So I'll take all of these and we can see here that I have the normal map which looks fine. It has the transparency, not the neither for the normal map. Uh, so everything looks good to go. I'm going to close that out. Uh, this one uh, should be fine. If I wanted to zoom in here and adjust some things, I could use like brush healing J on the keyboard and then just, oops. Um, Usually you can click if you have the CC versions, but I have this Photoshop CS, so I have to hold the Alt, pick a location, and then I can brush that out. So I can brush out stuff if I want to get rid of those white spots that probably shouldn't have been there. Uh, paint those out manually if I want, uh, but I'll leave that for now. Uh, cool. So I have this, but I don't know where the leaf is or the vine, so I'm going to take this guy, go to V for move, hold shift so it locks it in place, and drag this on top of here. So that drops on here, so I now know where the leaf goes and the vine. So I'm going to close out this, 
and this is the one I'll be working with. So I'm going to rename this to UV uh, template, and I'm going to rename this one to AO just by double clicking on them. Cool. I'm going to hold uh, control, hold spacebar, and then right click so I can go fit to screen so it maximizes a little bit more for me. And now let's go back to our textures. I grab some textures off the internet from like Google Images and stuff. So I'm going to grab these and apply these in Photoshop. So I'll start with the leaf, simple and easy. Uh, w for wand, click the white, uh, and then go up to image, invert. Actually, you can just do control, shift I, and that'll invert your selection. Uh, I don't need this, so I'm going to go to M for marquee, hold alt so I can deselect that, and then V for move, and drag this into here. So I now have a leaf. Uh, hopefully I put the leaf in the right direction, we'll find out. Uh, control T for transform, hold shift to keep it locked in position, or hold alt shift, and that'll lock it centered. And fit this exactly into that little box. Maybe slightly smaller. Cool. And press enter when you're happy with that. And we now have a leaf sitting inside there. Okay. Um, so that's good to go. Hopefully I put the leaf in the correct location. Or the orientation of the box. So let's close this out. And I can change the UVs later if need be. Uh, let's go fill our vine in there. So let's uh, V for move. Let's actually M for mark. Uh, we'll do L for lasso. Let's make this larger so I can pick one of them. I'll take this guy. Okay, now V for move and drag him into here. He's kind of small, but I can work with that. Alright, control. Actually, let me duplicate this guy. So drag the layer on top of the new icon, that will make a duplicate. I can hold shift and with the move tool drag it down to lock it in place. Then I can edit, transform, flip vertically. Uh, that will flip the image so it makes it identical from one side to the other. And then I can right click, merge down, so now the same image. And now when I drag this across here, it will duplicate this again. And I can hold shift and pull this down so they're all one seamless piece now. So I can right click, merge down again. So this is now our vine, oops, uh, double click the word, vine, control T for transform, uh, zoom out a little, let's move this up so the bottom matches, use the arrow keys to line it in place, uh, and then pull this back down, maybe pull this over just to make sure I have everything inside of the UV pattern. That should be plenty, press enter to confirm, and there's our vine. If I've stretched out of place, I'm going to go with uh, sharpen and just sharpen it so it's a little more sharper and clearer. Alright, cool. With that on there and that on there, I can turn off the UV template. And the rest is just coloring um, everything else. I'm going to rename this leaf and close out that. Uh, let's go for the slate. So I'm going to drag this inside here, see where that pops in. Very large. I'm going to turn that off for now. And... I'm going to want the slate on, let's say, this bottom section I want to have slate, and like that slate, and this slate. Okay, cool. So if I know what I want to be slate, I'm going to turn this back on, recenter this guy, control T for transform, zoom out, and might as well put this in the bottom corner, and slide him, I'll just go up to here. So it's not the most cleanest method, I should probably make this smaller, but Sure, might, might as well. Uh, control T again, I'll just make two of them. So this will be the slate for the bottom. Pull this back in. Okay, enter. And then let's duplicate that over to here. Move it over to here. And it's obviously it's not a seamless image, so I'm going to transform and flip it horizontally. And then tab it with arrow keys until it matches in place. And we'll call it good. So let's merge this down, right click, oops, right click on the empty space, merge down, uh, and then turn that off. Let's go with the lasso tool, L for lasso, and select what I want. So I'm going to select all of this lower section. Okay, and with that selected, I can turn this one back on, 
and click on right here which is apply a layer mask and it will only show the slate where I've clicked before um, and that should work uh, so now I want to take this AO texture drag this to the very top uh, underneath the UV template and then press uh, multiply and this will multiply the shadows on top of our slate material so now I have shadows sticking on top there it's a dark color so we can't see it too well I'm going to take one more of these slates drag this into here control T for transform and make it really small and put it on top of these guys all right enter to confirm that let's move it up a little more center better turn him back off and L for lasso select the ones that I want add a little more to that part and then if I use the W key for wand hold all and click the empty area it'll oops control Z make sure the AO layer is turned on and then hold alt and click there it'll drop the selection just to the exact parts of that if you want to be super accurate uh, now I can go back to this guy turn him on and apply the layer mask so the slate gets multiplied right to there make sure this is sitting underneath the multiplied shadows and so now I have shadows sitting on top of the slate uh, let's do two more let's close out the slate let's grab rock texture move that into place control T for transform uh, and usually you want to make sure your textures are all scaling downwards uh, you don't want to go upwards because you'll get blurry textures if you do that uh, let's see that should work right there enter to confirm we'll duplicate that drag it across to here and then file oops edit transform flip horizontally uh, move it across to here so it matches and then we'll merge down call this rock and turn that off go back to here and lasso let's select what I want um, try and be close to accurate doesn't have to be super accurate so there'll be a slight little overlap there for demo purposes this should be fine but if you wanted to be a little more accurate you could be a little more accurate let's go back to the AO magic wand deselect all that uh, I could use the V key oops control Z uh, move the selection up if I want or M key just move that up so it's a little more accurate and then go back to deselect that little oops uh, bit in there cool all right um, I should probably add this on there uh, not, not working too well let's just regular lasso okay and then deselect that out all right cool good enough uh, go back down to the rock turn that on and mask that out so I have rock there I have slate down there and then the last thing is actually I should put some rock on there also and it looks like if I turn this off disable layer mask the rock does more or less fit that so let's turn this back on and let's lasso out this add some more there and there and there cool and then deselect all of that oops wrong layer deselect all of that go back to here and let's click on the mask itself backspace, oh, backspace doesn't work G for bucket fill and fill these in so I've put white inside there if I hold the alt and click on this you can see that I've added the white into that area so that now reveals it looks like I could use a little more there so I'm going to click on this one D for D or control D for deselect uh, J alt select my point and then brush some stone inside there boom so now I have some rock there and lastly is the face close that out move this in place here I'm going to go with a bronze kind of statue control T for transform uh, that should work right there you pull a little more so they get a little more white in the face area okay and then last process again just go through and lasso out what I want to keep so this is all bronze 
make sure I'm on that layer, hold alt, click there, looks like I got too much, deselect that, and here, and apply layer mask, boom. So everything has now been colored, um, I'm going to save this, control shift s, the shortcut for that, and call this the pillar, texture pillar PNG, and make this a PNG. All right, and save that. Okay, and if everything looks good, let's jump over to Maya. Let's close out this and this, and hopefully I got my squares in the right place. Let's assign that new material onto here. So I'll do a blend again, double click on the sky and reassign, actually, cancel that. Uh, I'll just take the current material, which is this guy, and just swap out the color. So the color now goes to the regular PNG, open that, and everything should be colored. Uh, again, the transparency, for some reason, turned on, so right click and break connection on transparency, and that's good to go. These never got the textures on them, so let's just, just select everything. Right click, assign material to a selection, and that should be good to go. Uh, looks like the leaves are upside down. So, quick way to fix that, let's go to uh, Mesh, dis oops, uh, UV Texture Editor. Shortcut for that, it's also right there, UV Editor. And let's select our UV shell, select all the shells by selecting it across it, and then we're going to, under Transform, uh, Flip. So we're going to flip it, and now they should be the facing the other direction. Uh, maybe not. Hmm. Let's try tools or modify flip. All right then, move that around. Shading, let's go back face calling on. So it is the correct direction. Hmm. So it wasn't the UVs, it looks like it's something else. Switch back to the texture pillar. Ah, it's the could be the bump mapping. It's probably the bump mapping. That's why it's kind of disappearing part way off and on. So I need to adjust the bump mapping. So let's switch out to uh, not Chrome. Uh, jump back to the original UV template and back into Photoshop. I can close out this, minimize that. Oops, not that again. Uh, UV template and normal map, boom. All right, so because I did a PNG and the PNG has transparency right here, but the leaf doesn't, uh, so it's missing that, so I need a purple. So I can either specifically put purple there or I can specifically put purple everywhere. So I'm either probably don't need this, so I'm gonna go with um, a G for bucket fill and hold Alt, pick that color, and let's make a new layer. So I want to pick an even middle purple so it's flat, so everything turns purple. So now the leaf will be purple and the vine will be purple, and it's fine if everything's purple. So I'm going to go File, uh, Save, and that'll ask me this. Let's resave this back down as a PNG, as a regular normal map. Save, replace it, OK. When that finishes saving, it should update and fix the normal issue. Or you can click the texture to refresh it. Boom. There we go. So I can close this out so the UVs were fine. The leaf is in the correct direction. It was just the normals were missing. Uh, so the last thing is that the black part is black. Uh, in Unity, it should be okay. I can adjust that so I do need transparency. Um, except that it does make a mess of everything else. But in Unity, it should be fine. As long as our material in... Ah, not Chrome 
slowing some material in Photoshop is wherever that went there as long as there's transparency all around here then the leaf will have transparency around it in unity so we're fine with that uh, we don't need to change anything but if you wanted to go in my you'd have to specifically make a transparency map which is probably under our channel so the transparency map is right here so that's why we're getting some glitching right here because it doesn't include the bottom part of everything else uh, cool all right to so minimize all that and let's export again so everything's fine except that when I did the refresh on the materials it adjusted our bump mapping back to sRGB so switch that back out to raw and that should correct the normals so everything's good to go everything's colored his head might be a little too white I can change that in Photoshop but for the demo purposes it's fine you can see there's a seam right here because the texture didn't match exactly so we try and hide our seams as best as possible uh, but that's all a good deal so select all of this and export again let's make sure there's no history on anything so let's wipe out the history and select all these make sure the pivot is still centered which it's not insert hold X pop it back to the mid grid cool so that's good that's good everything's the same place everything's named correctly uh, bust one pillar two I can try and rename that but it doesn't seem to want to so I'm just gonna leave it as is file export selection and call this same thing static mesh pillar export selection done uh, pull up unity and let's uh, import this into unity so all we need is the FBX and the textures which is right here we have the FBX and we have our pillar and the normal so we don't need the AO anymore because it's baked into there because we did that in Photoshop so just the pillar and the PNG of those two let's create a new unity project call this pillar unity demo desktop 3d create project So once this boots up Unity, we just have to drop three maps in there and we're done. And just assign the materials. Uh, because the material, the textures will go at the same time and the character already has a material on them, they should auto attach. So if I take all three of these, drag them directly into the project tab, not the hierarchy, put them in the project tab, they should import and automatically create the material. So there's a material. It's going to ask us, is this a normal map? Do you want me to fix this? I'm going to say yes, it's a normal map, fix it now. Uh, take our pillar, drag it into here, and F and keyboard will zoom into it. And you can see everything is on here. Let's uh, grab the directional light and rotate that so it looks the other direction so I can see him a little better. Uh, for some reason, the normals didn't work, but if I click on him, it should update. Let's go back to Inspector. Uh, click on this guy still didn't work let's click on the materials and eventually it'll update there we go so it updated so now the normal map is attached since we did the fix it just had to update it uh, everything's detailed if i want to put a character in there i can put a character and walk around uh, let's go with game object 3d object plane put a plane in the ground grab this guy and let's zero him out zero 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 and take the plane and zero the plane out zero 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 and because everything is built on the grid in Maya it should auto update and put everything directly on the ground here and he should be the correct height so let's asset import package characters this will take 30 seconds to import and then toss our character in here and we can walk around we just have to add collision also if you wanted to add collision or build a custom collision uh, otherwise it should be in there thirty seconds almost up okay cool so standard assets characters first person character prefabs first person controller toss that inside here move the character up out of the ground and turn him around so he starts facing our pillar move him over here 
Looks like it's still lagging from loading. All right, try this again. All right, cool. All right, so that should be good right there. And let's add collision to the character, so let's, or the object. So add component, physics. Actually, instead of adding to everything, since I brought in two different pieces, they're both right here. So the bust is gonna have its own collision. So add component, physics, uh, box collider just on the bust. And let's add, actually let's probably do spherical or something. Add component, physics, box collider for this. Box collider looks bigger than it needs to be. Uh, so I'm going to make that a little smaller. So X direction, a little smaller. Z direction, a little smaller. And center it a little better over here. All right, so that should center close enough. If you want to make smaller icons, gizmos, 3D icon check, and how we, all those things get smaller. And the bust, let's switch that out. Right click, remove component, let's add a physics, they will do a sphere collider and make the spheres radius 0.1, too small, 0.16, good enough. All right, so that's good to go. And if I add a rigid body on this, uh, add component, physics, rigid body, that means this guy can now fall over. Uh, so if I press, let's make this bigger first. Now press play. I can walk around and look at the guy. And if I walk into it, I don't have anything there. If I jump up and bump the head, I should be able to knock his head to the ground because he has separate collision now. And because the collision is a circle, he's just gonna keep rolling. So I should probably have not made an exact circle, maybe custom make one in Maya. Uh, the last thing to point out is that the leaves are still not uh, transparent. So let's click on our texture or material and set this from opaque to cutout. So it'll use the cutout material of the transparency, which was that in Photoshop, anything that's checker pattern is transparent. So it takes the leaves and checker patterns everything instead of having just a black filling background on everything. So that now has everything good to go. You can see there's lots of detail. Um, if I wanted to spend more time, I could color some more in there but more or less I have an interesting looking uh, character. So if I press play one more time. Everything's all finished. And that's how you uh, texture the character and put them in Unity so that you can start uh, playing with it. Knock them over again.